If I asked you to solve this maze, how would you do it? Like when the path forks, how do you decide as a human which path to take? Is it all just kind of, you know, like luck and guessing, or is there some skill involved or even intelligence? Hold that thought. We're going to come back to this in a second. Because first, I, I need to be real with you. It is very hard to know right now what QSTAR actually is. We know from Reuters reporting that, according to their sources, it may be some kind of powerful artificial intelligence discovery at OpenAI, the company behind ChatGPT, and that there are fears it is so powerful it could threaten humanity. That sounds really dramatic, but this discovery was apparently alarming enough that at some point after a group of OpenAI researchers took their concern to the board, like, oh my God, are you all aware of what this company is working on? The CEO, Sam Altman, was fired. Well, we have the latest in the Shakespearean drama gripping artificial intelligence. Sam Altman is back as CEO of OpenAI. The previously unreported letter and AI breakthrough were key developments ahead of Altman's ouster. That whole saga, we just did a whole other explainer on. But what is this AI discovery and what makes it so threatening? OpenAI's very existence is the quest for what's called artificial general intelligence. The day will come when the digital brains that live inside our computers will become as good and even better than our own biological brains. We call such an AI an AGI, artificial general intelligence. That's like AI, but way more advanced. You see, large language models like ChatGPT have been trained to absorb patterns woven into the structure of language. And I'll explain what I mean. So if I ask a question to ChatGPT, like how do I scramble an egg? And it gives me, you know, like this whole thing about how to scramble an egg. It's using its raw computational power to discover patterns, make inferences, and then generate a response based on words and patterns that it's seen before. Like all the times it's ever seen the words scramble and egg together. Those help lead it down a specific road about breakfast foods. Human brains do that too, but we also think on an intuitive level because we understand concepts, not just data. And importantly, if ChatGPT had been trained exclusively on bad recipes, it might struggle to creatively come up with a better one. So uh, we could also imagine a robot. The robot is acting in the world. So to train these kinds of systems that take uh, decisions and actions and then get you know some feedback and you know the world changes and then they act again, like, just like us. So that's Joshua Bengio. He's been dubbed one of the godfathers of AI, who laid the foundation for the developments we are seeing in AI. If anyone understands how this works, it's him. Reinforcement learning has been designed to train those systems based on their experience so that they can achieve goals, for example. Just like you train your cat or your dog. And if we come back to our maze, how would artificial intelligence solve this? Well, maybe, you know, it would start at the beginning and at every fork, it would just kind of like pick a path. And so let's say it goes this way. And if it hits a dead end, it would backtrack, pick a different path, and it would keep doing this until Eventually, hopefully, it finds the exit. Or maybe we can do better, right? We can give it some rules of thumb to follow. Like, generally, if it's going down a path, you're looking for paths that seem to take you towards the exit. So at every decision point, it says, okay, well, the exit is down, so let's go that way. And the exit's still down if we're gonna keep moving in that direction until ultimately, we get to the exit. You don't waste time, right? Going in wrong directions. Those tidbits of wisdom are called heuristics. And, you know, we can teach it all kinds of things. Like maze exits tend to be on the edges of the maze and not say, you know, in the middle or in some random spot on the map. But what if the AI could formulate its own heuristics on the fly? What if instead of bumping into every dead end, it could actually think like a human and predict the optimal solution without having to pursue all the suboptimal ones. How do we allow these learning systems to think in ways similar to how we think, how we reason, um, how we take different pieces of information 
that come to our mind and are relevant and combine them in order to come up with an answer to a question. Earlier this year, OpenAI published research into a new kind of problem solving, a way of training AI by rewarding not just whether it came up with the right answer, but by rewarding the way it thinks by giving the AI model feedback for each individual chain of thought, rather than just its final output. Researchers wound up with more reliable answers and an AI that could actually solve math problems. That's hard because if you remember the way AI normally works, you know, the way it thinks is by linking features of things it has studied in the past, like when ChatGPT knew how to scramble an egg. Variations on that question, it has seen before help inform how to assemble words in a way that answers the question today. But math is so much harder because instead of a finite number of words with a finite number of arrangements, we're literally talking about an infinite problem set. Like if I write a random math problem on the board, so you know, eight plus 362 minus 147 times 89 divided by 45 times 67 plus 111 minus, you know, 3 million, uh, 60,000, whatever, you know, whatever the question I wanna ask. I can almost guarantee that this exact problem has never been written before in the history of humankind. There's just way too many ways to arrange all of these numbers. Nobody has ever asked this. So if some hypothetical AI model learned exclusively by looking for examples, it would get stuck fast. To independently and reliably solve math, you actually have to be able to reason. These systems are not as good as us still on a certain number of fronts. Um, in particular, things having to do with reasoning, mathematics, planning. ChatGPT, for example, is kind of terrible at this. If I ask it 14,709 plus 45 plus 879 plus 78 plus 12, let's see the answer it gives me. 15,623, that's the wrong answer. It's not that, it's actually supposed to be 15,723. These are like higher level cognitive functions. Um, and, and that's a gap that currently exists uh, between current AI systems and human level intelligence. Even, even a child doing you know, their math homework might be doing better in some cases. But OpenAI is reportedly closer to building AI that can do this kind of grade school math. Not just because it's practiced on billions of problem sets, but because it kind of understands math. If we bring this all back to QSTAR, what is it? Is it this? Is it capable of solving math problems? Is it capable of carrying out novel scientific research on its own? A lot of uh, work we do in science involve reasoning like this. It would be good to solve that problem, but also it's a bit concerning because if we can bridge that gap to human intelligence, we might have AI systems that are uh, smarter than us, or at least as smart as us, and I don't think society is ready for that. This sort of technological change happening now that is going to so change the constraints of the way we live and the sort of economy and social structures and what's possible, um, I think this is like going to be the greatest leap forward that we've had yet far, yet so far, and the greatest leap forward of any of the of the big technological revolutions we've had so far. We have no way of knowing how close to the concept of artificial general intelligence QSTAR comes, but it's fun to speculate on just how close to approaching or approximating human thinking open AI may be. So we're working on something that will, will change everything, will change the way that we work, uh, the way that we interact with each other, and yeah. the way that we think. Four times now in the history of OpenAI, the, the most recent time was just in the last couple of weeks. I've gotten to be in the room um, when we sort of like push the front, the sort of the veil of ignorance back and the frontier of discovery forward. 
And getting to do that is like the professional honor of a lifetime. I think there's still this contingent of people that are deeply afraid of the existential risk of AI within the company. Um, and that potentially might do something drastic because if you put yourself in the shoes of people who genuinely believe that this could be catastrophic for humanity, like you will go to great lengths to try and prevent that from happening. So there, there could still be like fireworks. So buckle up.